Welcome back my World 2 families. Abraham from South Coast Water Academy. So in today's video, it's gonna be a 3G open root test, 6010 root and 7018 filling cap. So let's get to it. Check this out, look what I got right here, all right? Right here I got two plates. There are three eight plates right here. There's gonna be a 35 degree angle beveled, as you can tell right here, okay? The way I do it is I like to put a 332 landing and a 332 gap, okay? I keep it very, very simple, guys. Keep in mind, guys, that if you choose to go with a thicker landing, like a 1 8 landing or thicker than 1 8, you will have to burn hotter, okay? Now, if you choose to go with for a knife, with, if you choose to go with a knife edge landing, you will have to weld um, colder. Um, that's just the way it is, okay? So it's gonna be up to you to uh, use your good judgment, okay? But in this video, I'm gonna show you the way I do it. And now the way I do it is with a 332 landing and a 332 gap. All right, check this out, guys. I have my test tacked up and ready to go. It's a 3G open root. Okay, uh, 6010 root, uh, 7018 hot pass, and a 7018 filling cap. Okay, when I fill this groove up, I like to weave, weave my beads. Okay, but if you don't like to weave, you can put multiple beads in there. Okay, but I'm gonna weave this thing all the way out. Um, the amps that I'm going to be running are gonna be at 77 amps for my root, uh, my hot pass. Uh, I'm gonna go switch over to 7018. I'm gonna run that thing at uh, 90 amps and then filling cap. And I'm gonna go, uh, go ahead and stay at 90 amps with that, okay? I'm about to start my root pass and I'm gonna show how I do my root pass. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show you all my technique. So what I do is I establish my keyhole right here. Let's pretend this is my keyhole. This is the right wall and this is the left wall, okay? And my keyhole's right here. And down here is my puddle. Okay, and this is my keyhole right here. Okay, so what I like to do is when I move up, I push right here just lightly, and what that does, that chokes the rod and it stops heat from coming out and it lets the portal right here down here cool off. And when I see that it's cool, it's cool off, when I see that portal turn from bright red to it darkens up, then I go back to the portal and I tap it. But I only tap the edge of the portal. And then I go back up and push, okay? And, and I repeat, up, down, up, down, up, down. But, don't, but remember, every time you go up, you gotta put, give it a slightly push in, in into the keyhole right here, to the end of the keyhole, okay? Now, you might ask me, how far do I go up whenever, how far do I step out of the puddle, okay? The answer to that is, you step out, the, you step out of the puddle, you look at your, the size of the keyhole, okay? If the keyhole is real, real small, well then you only go up to the, Top, top of the keyhole. You know, if it's, your keyhole's really, really big, you would, you would go from here all the way over here, okay? It just depends on the size of your keyhole, okay? Now, if your keyhole's getting out of hand, it, it, it means you're way too hot and it's time to turn down the machine, okay? Or you didn't put enough landing and you're just blowing through. Um, then again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up and down like this. Push, down, push, down, push, down, push, down. Push down, push down, push down. Now, there are uh, sometimes, for for a lot of reasons, um, your portal wants to face. Let's say this left wall, right wall. Your portal starts favoring this side over here, okay? And you have your keyhole over here, and your portal starts favoring this wall. What you have to do in that in that in that situation, when you go up and you come back down to the portal. You have to press against this the, the, the right side of the puddle and your puddle will shift to the middle, okay? But if you press too much, it'll shift way over to the to the wall, okay? So that's how you fix that. But anyways, uh, let's light up.
Right here, I'm just stepping it, guys, going up and down. And as I step out of my puddle, I push the rod in. Very important. Very important. Up and down, push down, push down, push down, down, push down, push down, push down, push down, push down. All right, guys. Well, I just finished the first half of my root pass. Um, I'm running at 77 amps. Uh, at that, at some parts, I did feel like my root, my root, my keyhole, I uh, was getting out of hand. But for the most part, I was able to control it. Um, so I'm gonna keep it at 77 amps. Okay. Um, everything's going out fine. Uh, I'm getting ready to feather it now. All right, guys, so check this out. I just finished uh, about more than half of my root pass. Uh, as you can tell, I feathered it. You always want to make sure that you, you feather it if you want to make sure uh, that you have a proper tie-in. Now, you can't get away without feathering, but that takes a little bit more skill. Um, and I don't know how skillful y'all are. If you want to try it out without feathering, go ahead. Uh, it is possible. Oh, I sometimes do it, but if I want to make sure that I'm going to have a great tie-in, I always, always, always feather, all right? As you can see, you can see my keyhole right there. That's the keyhole I was talking about. So what I do, my technique is when I go up, I push right there, and then I come back down, I just tap, push, tap, push, tap, push, tap. So right now, I'm, I'm going to get ready to strike up. I'm going to strike up right here. Circle, 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 work my way up. And then when I get about to this point, I'm going to probably pause for a little bit, wait for this part to blow out for it to get hot and then I'm gonna go ahead and start my route. Push down, 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 push down. All right, guys. So I just finished my root pass, and after your root pass, what you want to what you want to do is smooth out your root your your root pass with your grinder. This is exactly what I did right here. Okay. Um, another thing that I want to uh, tell y'all is I did clean my plates before I tacked them up right here. I made sure that to clean all that mill scale off of the plate, and what that's gonna actually help me with is my undercut when I uh, it helped me not get undercut whenever I go ahead and cap this plate right here. Okay, so I'm about to start my uh, I'm about to start my uh, hot pass. I'm gonna do it with 7018. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my machine down all the way up to 90 amps. Okay. So the technique that I'm gonna be using for my hot pass with my 7018 rod, I'm going to be weaving. Okay, and I'm going to be use, uh, zigzagging. All right. What I do is I start on one side and I count two or three seconds. One, two. Then I switch over to the neck to the opposite side and then I and I hold it there. One, two. One, two. One, two. One two, one two, one two, one two, one two. Okay, and that is how I weave. Uh, I'm gonna weave it out all the way from my hot path all the way to my uh, to my cap. Okay, so let's get this started. One two, one two, one two, one two, one two. One, two. So what I'm doing right here, guys, I'm just zigzagging as I go up. I'm pausing two or three seconds on each wall. If you count slow, two seconds. If you count fast, three seconds. One, two, three. 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 One two 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 three. 
Again, I'm zigzagging and I'm pausing on each side for about two seconds. Two slow two seconds and three fast seconds. One, two, three. Alright guys, as you can see right here we have my hot pass. Um, I feel really good with this. Uh, there's no slag along the sides right here. That's always a good sign. Um, the reason why you would get slags, slag on the sides right here, trapped over here, would be whenever, uh, mo the most common mistake would be uh, whenever you're not pausing, you don't pause long enough on the sides. So if you don't pause long enough on the sides, you do see slag marks on the sides. Alright guys, so I just finished my hot pass. Again, I ran it at 90 amps. Now I'm going to start my fillers. Now, I'm using my good judgment here, and I, and I, I believe that uh, with my next pass, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flush it out, okay? Um, the reason, and I want to actually flush it out with my next bead. The reason why I want to flush it out with my next bead is because if I go ahead and put one bead, one, uh, another bead after this, or another weave after this one, and then I'll go ahead and put another one, I'm going to be protruding too much out, too much out when I... Um, when I want to put my uh, cap beads on there. So again, I'm going to go ahead and flush it out with this bead, okay? And they're out. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and weave it again. And I'm just going to pause on each side. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Now, that's the way I do it. If you want to go ahead and run two stringer beads right here, one on the left side and then one on the right side, you can. You can go ahead and do that, okay? But I'm not going to do that. Uh, get to it. All right, guys, I just finished uh, uh, throwing my, uh, my second half of my fiddler right here. As you can see, I started right here. And uh, got a little bit of slack to it. Let's knock that out, see how it looks. Man, that looks really good. Really, really good. Okay. As you can tell right here, um, it looks like it's, you know, you know it's below, below this line right here. I'm going to go ahead and fill this up right here, okay? So that when I go over it with my cap you know it looks like i have my whole beats my whole plate completed okay so again i'm, go I'm gonna go ahead and fill this right here look at this below uh below flush uh very important that you do whenever you go test and you have this you don't want to leave this underfill because then uh qc's and inspectors who are, who's ever inspecting your test uh will reject you because of that okay and that's that always happens you can just go over it right there and just Fill that little uh, spot up, spot up. All right, guys. So I just finished flushing it. Um, I'm really happy with my flush, as you can see. It's nice and flat all the way through, and uh, that's what you want whenever you're gonna start your cap. You want a nice flat surface because if you have an uneven surface, uh, it's gonna show on your cap, and it looks it's your, your cap is just gonna look terrible. Okay. So the technique I'm gonna use for my uh for my cap, which is going to be a two bead stringer cap. I'm going to weave, but I'm only going to weave little weaves and I'm going to pause on my left side. So I'm going to pause right here then I'm going to weave to my right, but I'm not going to weave all the way over here. I'm just going to stop about halfway and then go back to my left side and pause. Again, I'm going to go over here, go back to my left side and then pause. I'm just going to repeat that. I'm going to go one, two, out, 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 one, two, out. One, two, out, one, two, out, one, two, out, one, two, out. And I'm going to do that all the way to the end of the test, to the top. Nice and flat, all the way through. You want a 
nice flat surface because if you have an uneven surface, uh, it's going to show on your cap and it looks, it's, your cap is going to look terrible. So my cap, which is going to be a 2 d stringer cap. I'm going to weave, but I'm only going to weave little weaves. And I'm going to pause on my left side. all the way over here. I'm just going to stop about halfway and then go back to my left side and pause. I'm going to pause right here and weave to my right, but I'm not going to weave all the way over here. I'm just going to stop about halfway and then go back to my left side and pause. So guys, it's about, it's about, it's in between an eighth and a sixteenth shooting out, just like I wanted it. I felt really confident that I was laying this uh, blue pass down. I didn't feel confident on my tie-in, man. You can't even see my tie-in, which is, it was around right here. It was around this area right here, my tie-in. All right, guys, well, there you have it. Uh, 3G open route on a 3 8 plate, uh, 332 gap, 332 landing. But anyways, I hope this video helped y'all out. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time.